whenever you're ready. So today my informative speech is about overfishing, and uh, I would like to awaken you to the uh, uh, dangers of overfishing and effects it has on the ocean. Overfishing is a serious issue when it comes down to the health of the oceans. The overfishing is defined as catching too many fish for that fish population to be populous, leading to unsustainability. Through my research of this topic, I have found out that 80% of the Earth's biomass comes from the oceans, meaning that 80% of the world's life is sustained by the ocean. This topic is relevant towards you because if you love sushi or any, any other type of seafood, um, with overfishing, you know, that food source goes away, and there is no more sushi, no more seafood, or the price goes up because of, um, you know. And then um, also the most importantly is that simply that, that we lose the diversity of life the ocean gives us, as some of the most amazing uh, features come from the ocean. And if overfishing is not controlled, then we lose that form of uh, life and never be seen again. Also, in the medical field, um, they get a lot of uh, medicines and new uh, technologies from the ocean, from the diversity of life that is there. Um, the main points that I will cover in my presentation will be about the dangers of overfishing, and I'll show some examples, the effects it has on the ecosystem, and how it will lead to a dead ocean, its tradition, and how it leads to the food, uh, no food for the rest of the world, and lastly, efforts to re-establish the ocean population. Um, overfishing is a taking of marine life to the point where that life cannot recuperate in time to be abundant and can cause a species to be drained or even become extinct. The reasons why overfishing has been so prevalent is because there's almost no restrictions on these industries and only 1.6% of the world's oceans have been declared a marine protected area. Um, and of this uh, percentage um, of the existing marine protected areas, the, these uh, marine protected areas are open to uh, any kind of fishing, and these type of fishing include, um, this type of fishing is illegal, has no governmental restrictions, and it's unregulated. There are three common types of, uh, three common uh, types of overfishing. There's recruitment overfishing, which fishes out the older population of fish, making it harder for the fish species to recuperate because the younger fish, uh, fish species are not old enough to spawn. There's growth overfishing, which is harvesting the fish population at a smaller size, which does not allow the maximum yield per circuit. And there's ecosystem overfishing, which is the diminishing of a fish population by overfishing it, which in turn uh, shifts the ecosystem in balance. Examples of how fish industries go about fishing is by drift nets and trolling. Drift netting is the use of suspended nets dragged by behind the boat. These nets are suspended in the pelagic zone of the ocean where most fish live. These nets then scoop up any life that is hanging around and is not selected. These nets are then brought up on board and sorted for the intended catch with all species, with all other species thrown back, but now are, but that are now injured and will most likely die due to the injuries. Trolling is similar to drift netting, but this kind is more devastating as these weighted nets are dragged along the boat at the bottom of the ocean, causing masses, masses amount of uh, fish, uh, massive amounts of fish, but also wrecking the ecosystem and habitats these fish depend on to thrive. Trolling is so devastating that it has been banned in countless uh, places such as the U.S., Indonesia, New Zealand, Canary Islands, and the Mediterranean, just in a few. Other forms of fishing include whaling, shark pulling, and gilling. And this is a picture of um, what trolling does to an ecosystem, you know, thriving versus completely devastated. Overfishing has massive effects not only on the ocean ecosystem upsetting the balance, but also on the coastal communities that depend on the fish as the main source of protein as well. Coastal communities who depend on fish for food have done so for so many years, and these communities, communities are now experiencing fish shortage in the catch because there's simply not enough fish left for them to, to harvest due to the fish industries overfishing the ocean. These unregulated fisheries are threatening the food security of coastal communities, especially in, de in developing countries. The way the ocean system is getting harmed is that the fisheries are not only catching small fish with their nets um, in their nets, but they also target top predatory uh, predators such as billfish, sharks, and tuna. With these top predatory fish taking out of the food chain at alarming rates, it gives rise to abundance of small fish at the bottom of the food chain, which will uh, give rise to the growth of algae and has an impact on the overall uh, health system. Also, the fish are being caught. They also devastate the ocean floor by coral reef, uh, by destroying the coral reefs, which uh, fish collarbones are completely destroying and leveling the ocean floor. 
My third point on oral fishing is that some countries do it out of tradition. Meaning that, some, meaning that the way they catch their fish is gruesome and no longer uh, should be accepted as tradition. An example of oral fishing out of tradition can be done, seen done at the Faroe Islands located in the mid-Atlantic. This community of people engage in a tradition called grind. The grind is used for boats to herd and scare hundreds of uh, pilot whales and dolphins to beach themselves, at which point the people on the shore go and brutally slaughter the whales and dolphins for a type of food source, but in doing so, deplete the population is just inhumane. All the examples of overfishing, if left unregulated, will lead to a dead ocean, meaning that the only life in the ocean will generally be algae, jellyfish, and parasites. This is a real world event that could happen because fish are taken out of, out of the ocean by a tent every day in the bycatch, which is just, uh, just fish life that happens to be caught while fishing for their intended catch is simply thrown away. And that's a waste of life. Unless humans act now, seafood will completely disappear by the year 2048 coming up. With the massive loss of life that has been happening, it hasn't gone unnoticed. Efforts by the World, Wild, the World Wildlife Fund is working to animal fishing at both the local and commercial levels um, by uh, working with fish industries to improve their sustainability, have minimal impact on the environment, and to provide food for years to come. The destruction, the destruction on some of the ocean's habitats can be reversed through time management, but others still cannot, such as coral reef. The ways that fish injuries can reverse the effects they have done is simply with the rest with some set of rules that go as follows. They can say they can set safe catch limits, control on bycatch, protection of pristine important habitats, and monitoring and enforcement. Also at the local levels, such as us, we can help um, out by being informed about uh, overfishing, know what we eat, um, and spread the word. In conclusion, is what I have put, uh, discussed in the class today is a real world problem that affects us, not affects us all, not just developing countries. Or fishing is causing serious issues among the ocean's overall health, with the taking of large amounts of territory fish, causing an imbalance in the food chain and ecosystem into unregulated fisheries. The fisheries are depleting the ocean of valuable amounts of food needed by coastal communities to survive and also devastating marine life environment. If unregulated and these fisheries continue to fish at the current techniques, all seafood will be gone by the year 2048 comes around, and um, the ocean will not be recuperated back in time uh, to be abundant again. All right, Marielle, what did you think? I think you've got a lot of information in this speech. Uh, you're not always citing the sources, though. In fact, I think it was only at the end that I got a source citation for the information, and that's problematic. The explanations, though, are pretty good. I especially liked your explanation about the impact of trawling on the ocean floor, and uh, your distinguishing uh, the different kinds of fishing. With that visual, I thought that that was a pretty effective tool there. Uh, the other visuals bring uh, interest issues into play, and you know, kind of focus our attention in regard to that. So I think that they're working pretty well. I'd say that that's one of the stronger elements of the speech. 
I'm going to kind of agree about the delivery. Sometimes you're going a little quick and you're not articulating as clearly uh, and you need to project a little bit more because I meant, uh, you mentioned like the three types of overfishing at one point. I could not catch the first two terms at all and I know you had names for them and I don't, I don't really know what the names were because it, we didn't get a review on it. You're not, you're not making it distinct from anything else and it all kind of runs together. So that would be one of those things that maybe you want to emphasize. Since that's part of your organizational structure, you want to make sure that people can follow that and maybe be a little bit more careful and maybe pause a little bit more or to repeat a concept or term. Uh, it helped a little bit when you had the visuals later on to kind of clarify a couple of those points. I could go back and figure out what it was that you were talking about before because uh, you had some references to it in a separate section. but. I'm still not sure I've got a, a, a one of them. You know, that threw me off a little bit. I think that that's problematic. I'm going to yell again. I, I'm not yelling, but I'm going to you know, shame you. I don't know, whatever. Come on. The attention device should not be, my topic is, the speech I'm giving. Today I'm going to uh, inform you about, let's, we spent time talking about a dozen different kinds of attention devices that you could use, and I think that you want to take advantage of those. Uh, the definition thing, I think, is okay. Maybe start with that. You know, the subject is overfishing, and uh, Webster's defines overfishing as, or the World Wildlife Federation defines overfishing as, and you know, use a quote that way. I mean, you've you've got it in the toward the beginning of the speech, but you're not using it as the attention device, and I think that that's a little bit problematic. You do have a good preview, so that helps organize things. And like I said, I thought that there's a structure that you can follow. I just thought sometimes the language in the structure was not distinct, and so it was a little bit hard to uh, pick out. I thought you had a very solid summary at the end of the speech, and then you stepped on it with the bad exit line. So you want to be careful about that. Because here you went and you know fixed a, a little bit of what was the problem in the speech, and then you trip right at the end as you're finishing off and you want to be more graceful than that. I think, uh, you, like they say, you want to nail the dismount. Like if you were doing the, the what do they call it, the balance beam or something like that, you got to you know, get it right and, and, and stick it. And I think that you just, just miss that because that little extra tagline that you throw on there that you don't need. All right, thank you.